everyone, this is George Kroos, and here I am with a solo episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast, and I just want to thank you, first of all, for being here. Uh, Thank you for taking the time out of your day, whatever you're doing right now. I hope that it's uh, filling you up the way that you need it uh, to be done, because I know sometimes I like to listen to podcasts when I'm uh, having a break. Uh, you know, when I'm running, uh, sometimes when I'm just relaxing, honestly, sometimes when I go to sleep. So I hope that wherever you are right now, uh, you're enjoying your time. And I actually just got off a podcast myself that I recorded with, uh, Dwight Carter, Livia Chan and Tim Cavey talking about, uh, because of a teacher and, uh, I'm really proud of this book. I'm really proud of the ideas shared in here. You can actually see, uh, there is a link to it in the description. I think it's a really uh, powerful book. And I, I know that, you know, obviously I'm saying that cause you know, I was part of writing the book, but I think it really kind of shows gratitude and, uh, in a time where we need it more than ever, we need these shout outs to, the people that we've connected with that have made an impact in our lives. And, you know, the, the book is actually inspired by the, the three questions podcast where I ask who's a teacher that inspired you, uh, who's an administrator that inspired you and, uh, what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? And so it's meant to like show gratitude for people around the world and that have been in our lives, but also really show our own growth and development over time. And so after the podcast, Uh, And this is what inspired me to record this. So I'm hoping this is one of the three ideas um, that I'm sharing right now is uh, I actually shared this idea in the podcast with Tim and Dwight and Livia and just all amazing people. Um, Something that would be such a powerful professional learning experience is if you actually had um, your own podcast as a school, as a district. And you use the questions, you're more than welcome to use this, you know, obviously, we'd love a connection back to the podcast and to the book um, is, is actually uh, asking students who is a teacher that inspired you and why. And the reason I say this is like, it could be such a short little story from your current students talking about like, hey, here's a teacher that I absolutely love. Here's why I love them. And so there's two components to this, I think are really powerful. The first one is, the value of kids showing gratitude for the people in their lives right now. Uh, When I share the gratitude for my teachers, this was for my kindergarten teacher 41 years ago. Like this is from my experience 40 years ago in school, right? Uh, My, my music teacher who grade eight, so 1988. So that's what 33 years. And then my uh, phys ed teacher in 1993. So that's 28 years. So, uh, you know, I, I shared gratitude with them before, but if that was the first time they heard it, that's a long time. And I think people need to feel that, you know, that people are grateful for them right now. And I say this all the time that it's better to show gratitude uh, too early rather than too late. So I encourage you um, to actually maybe have, just think like, hey, can we do like a 10 minute podcast and share these ideas with, with uh, you know, ask our kids, like who's inspired you? Like who's a teacher on our staff that inspired you? Like, and maybe don't even limit to teacher, right? As I'm talking about this, Maybe just say who's a staff member because then we start seeing maybe uh, it's this bus driver that's taking their time out of their day to the greet kids in the morning. It's that the, the, the custodial staff that's, you know, welcoming kids and, you know, greeting them with that smile every day. It's that office staff who's so warm and caring, you know, for so many of our kids. And so kind of doing these 10 little podcasts, the second reason I think is really powerful is it's really think about it as kind of a professional learning opportunity, like in little bite-sized chunks. So have a kid co- talking about, you know, for 10 minutes, like who's a staff member who inspired you. It actually kind of shows like, hey, what, what resonates with kids? What makes the biggest impact? And so like maybe it's a good thing that we have conversations about. And what I suggested to um, the group when we were talking about this, because Dwight asked me how to uh, actually go further uh, with this idea I said, like a lot of times we were like, hey, let's schedule that, you know, we'll do this every Tuesday, we'll interview someone. Or you could do it this way. And I think this is where I try to do this. So it is October 2nd, this is not gonna be broadcast till November. Because what I do is I actually record all these podcasts and then I actually schedule them so they come out every Sunday. So there's a consistency there too. So you could actually say like, hey, let's take, you know, half a day. And let's, you know, interview one child at a time. We'll block off slots and we'll record these for the next month. Uh, We'll do four episodes or we'll record eight episodes. And then every like Monday or every Tuesday morning, it's going to come out. So there's a consistency. So you're kind of expecting that. And it's a good way to help build an audience. 
Um, but it's, you know, then it's not like information overload. So it's kind of spread out. You can have some time to have conversations about uh, what was being shared. And I also think it would be uh, really powerful uh, to, to maybe even ask parents like, hey, like, let's do, maybe we'll have a Monday one with, uh, with a student and a Thursday one with a caregiver. And so they can talk about maybe their experiences in school. And so we're actually hearing for the people that, you know, um, you know, that, you know, care for our kids, uh, you know, at home that, you know, care for the, for their own children at home, what they, what their impact was like, who, who stuck with them as a teacher. And so I think it's a great community building opportunity as well. So I, I think this would be a really great idea. So it, I wanted to share this. I've shared this in a, my email list, but I wanted to kind of talk it out, uh, for people that might be interested, uh, in this idea. And so the second thing I want to share with you today is, uh, and this is kind of tied as I was kind of thinking about like, what are three things I could share with people? And this is kind of tied uh, to this idea of bringing parents into this podcast. Uh, I actually had an opportunity just yesterday to um, work with a group uh, of, of educators who work with adult students. And the reason I actually had that opportunity is because uh, my parent council lead when I was principal uh, was actually the person organizing it and her and I made a great connection this was years ago and we kind of reconnected the last little while because she's running this program and she felt like my message is so perfect for the work that she's doing and and uh, we had so many great conversations and it wasn't and I think this is really important when we would try new things on our staff I wouldn't tell her right this is what we're doing with our staff uh, I would say like hey like here's something we're considering what do you think and she'd give me feedback. She, you know, represent the parents. She talked to a ton of parents. You know, she'd give me some information at a later time. And so we always try to modify things based on what parents are saying, how we're actually uh, connecting some of their ideas. And so when they saw the solutions that we had for our school community, they actually saw their input in that process. And I think that's a really important aspect because if schools are the center of the community, the community has not to be just engaged, but empowered through that process where they're actually having, you know, sharing some of their ideas, sharing some of their, their connections. And so people are more likely to advocate for, you know, initiatives coming out of the school when they were a part of that process, when they actually had input on this. And what I've seen in my experience is that sometimes we have tremendous, you know, uh, parent and caregiver pushback to some of the initiatives that are happening in our schools because it's just a surprise it's like they had no idea and it's not anything they experienced at school so they're like I'm not understanding why they're doing it so I think partly it, it, it actually I know that it seems like hey involving parents and caregivers into these conversations might be kind of an onerous task it might actually delay things a little bit but that being said, it will save you so much time later, you know, kind of going back and saying like, hey, we did this and why don't you like it? And having those arguments and people not trusting you through this process. So uh, we really wanted to be a part of this. And so when I was a system principal and a principal, every single staff PD day we had, we invited parents from the community and it wasn't always the same parents. You know, we, we wanted parents with, you know, different experiences, different viewpoints attending these days. Uh, because we wanted them not only to see what we were learning, uh, but to be a part of the conversation. And here's something that I felt was really powerful. We were able to move very quickly through things because parents would go like, wow, this is nothing like when I was in school. This is so much better for my kids. And this is a, this is a, a narrative that I really dislike that I hear in education often is that parents want uh, the same experience for their kids that they had in school. That is not true at all. Parents want what's best for their children. I, I truly believe this, right? If they know no other experience than the one that they actually had in education, they will just by default think that's the best, right? And, and I think when you actually have, you know, your parents and caregivers in that space where they're learning alongside of you and they're watching and saying, this is so much better than when I was a kid, they're gonna be your biggest advocates. And I think that's a really important process. So just kind of thinking about how do we actually bring in our community to actually be a part of this conversation? And does it actually, on the other hand too, does it create an accountability when, when parents are kind of watching what we're learning and seeing the stuff 
that we're doing, you know, on our staff PD day, does it actually, you know, create like a, maybe a little bit more, um, um, impetus for us to actually, uh, put those things into action. You know, it can't be just something that we're like, okay, whatever. I'm just like, I'm just gonna go back to what I was doing. It's like, Hey, like, you know, people are seeing that we're learning this stuff. We actually have to kind of be involved in this too. So I think there's a, there's a process of how we bringing parents in, having these conversations, sharing these ideas. I think there's a real power in this. So just kind of think about how do we actually connect the two. So the first idea really think about, you know, asking students, you know, your community, uh, who is a teacher that inspires you and why using that 10 little snippets, you know, uh, using that as professional learning. And then the second one was really thinking about how we bring our caregivers, our community into professional learning opportunities. And, uh, before I get to the third one, I actually just kind of thought of a story that I wanted to share real quick. I don't think you should just even limit it to parents. We actually, um, we, we brought in community members. Uh, we brought in students as well too. Uh, and you know, obviously it's age appropriate, you know, kindergarten kid, maybe at a PD day is probably not the best thing, but high school students, uh, can actually have that opportunity. And this is the story I want to share and just came to my mind as I'm kind of talking these things out. And this is actually going to lead to the third thing I wanted to talk about. Um, I remember actually was at a professional learning day that I was invited to speak at, and I am such a huge advocate of kids being a part of that day. And one of the things I remember, I was in Lethbridge, Alberta. I think, yeah, I was in Lethbridge. It was in Southern Alberta. And I had been part of a lot of PD days. Uh, and a lot of times the superintendent will go up or, you know, a school board representative and they'll start talking and it's, uh, you know, people, people will just continue talking over them. They'll like even hear the mic on and they'll talk louder because, you know, the superintendent's interrupting their conversation they're having with the neighbor. And it's kind of like an awkward thing that I've actually you know seen happen in in education and I remember when I was in Lethbridge uh, what they did a grade two kid started the day came up to the mic started talking and it was silence it was absolutely amazing right because who what teacher wants to be interrupting a seven-year-old it's probably not the best look right and just we paid attention but there's also like why did we get an education we love kids right like I think that's a really powerful thing and so ever since that day, I was like, yeah, we have to get kids involved. This is really, it reminds us why we do what we do, you know, gives us accountability to, you know, act in the way that we, you know, hope for our students. And so there was this one day, uh, the, the, the group asked me, uh, they said, Hey, we want kids to introduce you. Uh, do you have an introduction to the career? I said, actually, I, I would rather them not read an introduction. I want them to Google me and create their own. So I want them to kind of look like how important it is to actually Google someone. So they Googled me, they wrote an introduction based on the stuff they found is absolutely brilliant. So they introduced me, I start walking up to the stage. And then all of a sudden, um, they're actually walking out of the auditorium. I'm like, Hey, where are you going? And they're like, Oh, we just we're just here today uh, to introduce you. Uh, but we're you know, we're like, it's our day off, right? So <laughs> we're just here to do that. And we're out. I said, I would love for you to stay. I, 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 the things I talk about, I would love your feedback. I'd love to hear, I'm here to advocate, you know, for things that I hope that help you. And I would love for you to be a part of this conversation. It would be so amazing if you stayed and they're like, uh, actually it's our day off. So we're not going, I'm like, okay. I, I said, here's the deal. If you stay and this sucks, I'll take you, I'll take you all for lunch. I'll, I'll, I'll buy you all lunch. And they're like, all right, okay, we'll stay. We'll stay. Cause they're like free lunch. This is going to suck. We're going to get a free lunch out of this. And uh, they stayed and they actually loved it. And they they were, I, I could tell they were like, this is actually really good. Like, I love what this guy's saying. And I, it was just such a, you know, powerful thing because I, you know, that who is, that is ultimately who I'm accountable to. Uh, you know, if I'm advocating for practices for kids, I think the kids should be, you know, in that process. So we actually, um, they stayed for lunch, but I didn't have to buy it for them. They offered lunch and they, they stayed and had lunch, you know, in with the staff in the cafeteria. And so I sat with them and I just asked for the feedback. And a, a, a kid said something that I will never forget. Uh, and, and, and when they actually shared this to me, it was, it was really powerful. They said, um, if, if teachers are learning this stuff, uh, on the days that we're not here, why is this not happening in our classrooms? And I was like, just flabbergasted that that was said. And I thought, you know, like that, that is kind of a true thing. So having those students in there, there, like I said, there was an accountability, but you know, thinking as a professional learning day, 
do we encourage our staff to actually share like, hey, you know, it'd be great. Share a couple of things that you learn with your students. So they see you not as learners, uh, but maybe even share some of the stuff that you're excited about. Maybe share some of the things that you're struggling with. Um, you know, maybe we're not inviting students in right away. I don't know where you are as a community, where you feel comfort level with that, whatever. But, you know, do we model the learning that we expect from our kids, right? And this is something that I'm a huge advocate of. So, you know, the first one, getting that professional learning through that, you know, student podcast would be really powerful. The second one, how do we bring our community into our professional learning? And here's the third one, and this is going to kind of be an, an inception point. Uh, I actually had this conversation with uh, Lainey, or sorry, with Livia, Dwight, uh, and Tim. Lainey was actually in the chat, uh, not, not on the video. And uh, I thought, you know what, this is actually like, I kind of want to just capture this. I want to capture some of the things that I shared and I want to kind of just put this process in this reflection. And so as soon as they turn off their cameras and we logged out of there, I turn on my camera, I turn on uh, QuickTime and I started recording this. And I think there's a real power when we take time to reflect and we take time to like openly reflect. You can see like I'm not scripted or anything like this. I'm just trying to talk these ideas out. And sometimes I'll do this through a blog post. Sometimes I'll do this through a podcast. And so what I'm going to actually encourage you to think about, you know, do you take that time to not just reflect, but to openly reflect? Because, you know, I'm, I'm kind of really cognizant of what I say, how I say it, because I know eventually people are going to see this and sharing this time. And I think, you know, just maybe having these five, 10, 15 minute, you know, reflections where you're talking to a camera and saying like, hey, here's three ideas. And I just wrote some bullet points down. Now expand on them. Now kind of go through this. Uh, some of the stories that I told when I started talking about this uh, didn't actually come to me until I started sharing. And so it's actually, I think a lot of times we think about refle like reflection is a way to share our learning. And I actually think about reflection is a way we learn. There's, there's, there's two different things there. And I think part of you watching this or listening to this, that is part of the, pr the process is that as I'm talking this out, it is actually helping me figure out my thoughts, helping me kind of, you know, think about some stories that maybe connect to this. So I encourage you to kind of think like, hey, how can I do this in my practice? Maybe it is a podcast. Maybe it is a blog. And actually taking that time to have active reflection and just kind of sitting there, you know, writing your thoughts out, not as a way to share learning, but as a way to learn and thinking about how powerful this is. And once we do that, how do we actually utilize this with our students? How do we actually use it as our kids? Maybe students, you know, maybe talk about some of the process. Hey, talk about three main points, what sticks out to you, and just kind of work it out, you know, as you're talking, uh, you know, talking it out, uh, writing out, whatever, kind of through this process. So I hope that kind of going through this process, a little bit shorter podcast than maybe, uh, you know, what we typically share on these Sundays, I hope that it helps somebody out there. I hope that um, you can... Uh, utilize uh, these simple technologies to really, you know, make an impact with professional learning through the voice of students, through the voice of a community, but also how do you uh, maybe just process this learning, process your own learning through this open reflection, through this op opportunity. And one of my favorite quotes on this, the notion of reflection is from Clive Thompson. I referenced this in Innovator's Mindset. He said, anyone can win an argument inside their head, but when they face an audience, you have to be truly convincing and so you really kind of like thinking about like as i know this is an open space it's not just in a journal somewhere people are going to be able to to watch this to see this it's really making me think deeply about these ideas and hopefully somewhere something in this space has helped you uh through this process to better help kids so thank you for listening to this shorter episode of the innovators mindset podcast i love doing one of these kind of solo sundays um every month i hope you enjoyed it I hope that whatever you're doing, it's filling your heart and your mind. Uh, but thanks for having me today. Thanks for being part of this. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.